Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today we are back to working over here on the Lucas horizontal boring mill, trying to get this machine finished up and back in service. Uh, previously, we've done a lot of scraping on the bed, on the ways, on the saddle, everything, uh, getting this machine kind of ready to go back together. And we are finally getting into the short rows on getting this knocked out. Now, I've already pretty much cut everything flat and then plain and everything else. But what I need to do next is install a product that's called Turkite, or sometimes it's called Tersite. Uh, but it's basically a plastic type material that is epoxied onto the flat ways here that will ride onto the cast iron ways below. This is kind of a modern um, solution to some problems in machine building and rebuilding, uh, but it really works well. It's a, basically a Teflon based material that has little bitty tiny pieces of bronze embedded into it, and it makes for really good wear strips uh, to go on machinery ways. Now, you typically only want to install this on the side that's going to always be covered up. So, you know, we have the long ways that are going down. We're going to leave these cast iron, but the part that's riding on that, in this case, the saddle, that's going to be the part that will be covered with the turkite and um, will be there to protect it. Another really handy thing that this does is, is when you're rebuilding machines and you have to grind ways or scrape ways and also bearing into a, a, account the wear that was on the ways, over when you do all that, you know, when these two parts mate together, you know, we drop the, the, the height of the top of this down a little bit. We drop the, you know, the surface here down a little bit. Plus, uh, there was some grinding done in some places on this that removed that distance. Everything's dropping down. And when you have lead screws and stuff going through here, they can get out of alignment from basically where it started from. And when you put a product like this in, it's actually building those areas back up and raising it back up to get it back to where it wants to be. And uh, often when you're rebuilding machines, particularly when you're going to be doing a grinding operation and you're trying to determine how much material to take off, you can do some measurements to see how much material was originally worn. And you may, uh, you know, grind beyond just cleaning it up so that you can put some turkite in there to get it back to the proper height. And when we did some of this, uh, we, particularly on the table, we, we took that into account. There was no grinding on uh, the saddle, but I did some measurements and determined about how much wear was in there. And we got some material, in this case, it's about 60 thousandths of an inch thick, uh, that will hopefully help get this machine back in alignment. Today, we're gonna be installing this. Um, it's gonna have to cure set up for about 48 hours and then we're going to actually come in and scrape the turkite uh, which scrapes real easy real fast it's not near as much uh, work as in scraping the cast iron and we'll be checking some alignment over here with the head to get everything tweaked in exactly where it needs to be and that final little bit of adjustments uh, on alignment uh, and then I think we'll be done with the scraping at least on the bed and the saddle so let's get in here and uh, get started on getting some turkite installed. So this is the saddle and right now I do have it turned upside down. So the part that you're seeing here, th this slide way and this slide way will be what sets down on the ways down below. And as you can probably tell, we've already done some scraping on these. These had fairly significant wear in them. And while I could have sent this off and had it reground, I ended up just scraping it in. And we did all that previously. So everything is more or less roughly in alignment, real, I say roughly, it is in alignment. We've already checked all that. And uh, we're gonna, in this case, be putting the turkite directly onto these scraped surfaces and it'll get scraped again. Uh, you know, honestly, it probably should have just been sent out to get ground, but uh, and it wasn't out that bad and I just scraped it here in the shop rather than happen to send it out. Again, here's the roll of the turkite that'll go in here. We're just going to be cutting some wear strips to go in. Uh, one thing to note here is, um, you know, on one way, we pretty much have solid all the way down, although I'm going to do it in three pieces. We're going to do a piece here. There is a hollowed out spot here. We'll just do a little piece here in the middle, and then we'll do a piece on the end. But that will, in essence, give us contact from one end to the other. On the other side, notice they relieved out or actually the casting was done such as it's relieved out in the center and it only made contact on either end. The concept here is, is that, you know, 
this would help to prevent any rocking in the in the saddle. Uh, three points kind of fits more stable than four points. Uh, a three-legged stool will sit on uneven ground where a four-legged stool will rock. So same type thing here. You got point, point, and in this case, this whole side is kind of considered a point, uh, and it'll just be a little bit more stable. So we're going to be making a strip to go here, a strip here, and then there'll be a strip here, a small strip in the center, and a strip on the end. And uh, that should give us good contact all the way across. So first step, I need to roll this stuff out, uh, measure my strips, and cut some strips. Uh, this material basically, it comes in a... Uh, 12 inch, one foot wide piece. You can get it in wider strips and then you buy it by the foot, I think, or maybe by the inch, I can't remember. It's expensive, I do remember that. Uh, this stuff is not cheap, but it is a really good material. A lot of your new machines, CNC machines, they come directly from the factory with this installed. Uh, rather than having cast iron on cast iron, uh, they'll put the turkite on one of the surfaces uh, because it is such a good uh, wear material. And then two, uh, if you ever have to rebuild it down the road, almost all of your wear is going to be in this because it's considerably softer than the cast iron. So you shouldn't get a whole lot of wear on your cast iron. And you can literally just go in there and pull this stuff off and then reapply new turkite, do a little scraping to get it back in. And uh, you can kind of resurface the machine a lot easier with this than you could um, having to do it all in cast iron. Uh, as far as the adhesive goes, we'll be using, we're using a two-part epoxy. And um, while I have used some, you know, kind of just off-the-shelf epoxy in the past, we're actually using the manufactured recommended product. Uh, this is a resin Waylock 2 is what it's called. And it is made specifically for turkite. Um, while I was buying the turkite, I bit the bullet and just bought some of this epoxy to go in here. Comes with a little applicator piece that has a kind of a sawtooth edge on there to that you use to lay it all out. So let's uh, see if we can cut some turkite strips and get ready to get this uh, stuff epoxied onto these these pieces. I've got my piece of turkite laid out over here, and I'm ready to cut my first strip. And I've already kind of measured and double checked and everything. Basically, I need a piece that is um, two and three eighths or three and three eighths inch wide. Um, and we've got that. I've got a straight edge here uh, kind of lined up where I want my cut to be. And we're going to go down 35 inches and just cut a strip that wide. Now, to cut this, I got this on a piece of wood. And uh, we're just going to use a razor blade and this straight edge. This should allow me to get in there. May have to make a couple of passes here. But we're just going to cut all the way down here and cut off my mark just a little bit there. That looks better. All right, got a little bit wide right there. We'll just uh, recut that. All right, then I need to trim it up down here on the ends. And I'm just gonna use a square up against the uh, material. And there we go one piece of turkite cut out. Back over here at the saddle, just kind of bringing you up to speed. There is a uh, tapered gib that fits in on this side that slides as tapered uh, so that as you slide it in, it basically gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, and whenever I was measuring this, I was taking that into account. And we've got our little wear strips now cut that are going to go in here, kind of like such. We're going to epoxy these in place here in just a little bit. There's going to be three on this side and two wear strips on this side. 
like such. But before we uh, glue them down, I need to get in here and clean this up really, really, really good and uh, get some epoxy mixed up and then we'll be ready to kind of uh, start putting these in place. So let's get ready for that, but I wanted to kind of see where everything was going. So what I want to do is get in here and clean this stuff up as good as I can. And really what I'm trying to do more than anything else is just get any oil, grease, uh, anything like that that would potentially be in this that might cause the uh, epoxy to not want to bind to this. I want to get it off. I'm just using some uh, denatured alcohol, which uh, should cut any of that pretty good. And uh, these are pretty clean to start with, but we want to get them as, as clean as we possibly can and make sure. So uh, we're going to get in here and wipe these up real good. The other thing that's real important um, for doing this is, is that you got to have a little bit of something for uh, these things to grip to. So um, for that epoxy to grip to. Now I've already hand scraped this, so there is a little bit of a texture in there, particularly if it's a ground surface, you know, it really needs something to kind of grab a hold of. Uh, when I took my scraping class with Richard King, I remember him very well saying that when you're doing turkite, you want to scratch this surface up until it makes your eyes bleed. And his comment there was, it's going to look ugly. So I'm going to actually go get a carbide scraper and we're just going to put a bunch of scratch marks in there. And again, that just kind of gives it something to stick to. It's kind of a shame to do it after we've scraped these in, but you know, we were scraping it to get, to get it flat and get it uh, kind of tuned up. We're going to be scraping the turkite again uh, later on. Um, so I'm not too worried about messing this surface up because this is not the surface that will be uh, rubbing on the other side. So let me go grab, grab a scraper and uh, we're going to scrape, uh, just rub them up real good. Now the turkite material, the back side of it, this is the side that we're, that actually rubs against uh, the other part. This is the side that goes up. This is the side we put the epoxy on and it's got a little texture to it and uh, it will stick to that pretty well, but you do want to scratch these uh, surfaces up till it makes your eyes bleed, as Richard would say. So let me go grab a scraper and do that. All right, I got a hand scraper here, carbide bit on it, and we're just going to be kind of, we're not going to be using this like a hand scraper. I'm actually going to work on that corner there. And I'm just going to get in here and scratch this up. Again, we're not going after prettiness here. We just want to give some uh, little bite so that that epoxy has something to stick to. Grab a hold of. The Turkite use a two-part epoxy to hold it down and uh, I'm specifically using a product called Waylock 2. It's a two-part epoxy resin that is made specifically uh, for Turkite. Now I will say that I have seen plenty of people out there that use other two-part epoxies for this. I've been told that uh, the Turkite folks will only warranty it if you use uh, this particular product. But uh, I do know other things have been used. Everything from um, uh, Lockheite type products to even uh, JB Weld. Uh, I've seen it used before. Um, as far as what's best, you know, if, is there a difference between this and some of the other options out there? I don't know. I just decided that I was going to go with... Um, what was really recommended here and, and use the recommended product. So that's the reason that uh, I'm going with uh, this particular version here. So it gets mixed up uh, one, one to one. So one part of one and one part of the other. And uh, I'm mixing up a pretty generous amount because I've got a pretty generous amount I got to do over there. And I'm going to I'm just estimating here, get it pretty close, and that is pretty close, one to one. So we'll take these products and just kind of knead them together. Uh, I'm on a, a uh, board here, like you mix up uh, body filler on. This is just kind of sheets of a uh, paper that you can tear off, and you know when you use one, it gets hard, you just pull one layer off. So this uh, should work pretty good, hopefully. 
I don't know what the working time is on this, but you, you got plenty of time to, to deal with it. It's not going to harden super, super fast. But at the same time, you don't want to be uh, dilly-dallying around over here. You want to get your work done and move on. So um, we'll move on. It came with this little uh, applicator here. And like I think I mentioned before, kind of has a serration on the bottom down there uh, that makes it where you can, when you're spreading this out, it leaves little ridges in it so that, uh, that you get a nice uh, layer there. So we're going to go over here to the machine now, start putting some of this on there. I'm going to probably mix that up a little bit more in the meantime. We'll join you over the machine. Let me move my camera. Uh, get up here and going to kind of spread some of this around first with a little putty knife we want to get a fairly uh, generous amount of material on here and we want to put it on both sides so we want to put it on the the metal side here we also want to put it on the turkite side so that we make sure we get very good contact to mix up a little bit more of this stuff and now I'm going to kind of come in here with this little saw blade looking thing spread it around Need a little bit more over here on the edge I think Do that again. And I like that. I'm going to put some on the turkite side here. trying to keep it off the top of the turkite, but we can always scrape that later on. And um, we will be putting this down here in a minute and pressing it flat. So uh, I'm not too worried if uh, it's perfectly flat right now, we're gonna be taking care of that here momentarily. And I am gonna kinda wipe this uh, excess up off the sides. All right, one more little area here in the middle. And I think we're going to be just right on the epoxy. All right, I think we got everything glued down. I do want to take just a second and make sure I got it cleaned up good. All right, we got everything glued down real good. I'm just taking a second here to make sure we got as much of this stuff wiped off the tops of these. I don't want to glue anything down over here. So uh, just make sure we got everything cleaned up pretty well. That's pretty 
good. All right, I'm taking a strap here. I'm going to come in here and hook on to this. And the goal here, and the goal here will be to just flip this thing over on the ways uh, like it's normally going to be sitting. So let me get those around the corners there. All right, so we're just about ready here to lower this down in place. But let me tell you what I did. I, first thing I did was I wiped these ways off real good to make sure they were clean. And then I put some cellophane on here, just like you use in the kitchen. And the idea there is, is that if there's any epoxy that comes in contact with the ways, I'm not going to epoxy my uh, piece to the ways. It'll pull right up and allow us to get it cleaned up much easier. So we're just going to very carefully, very slowly here, lower this down. And then the weight of the saddle will actually help us epoxy that stuff in place where it's going to be um, nice and, and flat and basically on its mating surfaces. Here, I'm gonna kind of see if I can scoot this down just a little bit farther here. And we are in place. So we are, we got the weight of the carriage or the weight of the saddle pressing down on it. You know, when I've done this on, on, some bigger machines or bigger pieces, sometimes you uh, need to uh, add weight to it, put weights on it, but this casting is more than heavy enough, so we're not gonna have any issues there. All right, we're just gonna let that sit. We'll let that epoxy set up overnight and uh, probably go ahead and get the table mounted on here too, and epoxy in the place as well. So let's get set up for that. So next I have the wear strips that will go on the bottom of the table. And I have already kind of come over here and gotten these cleaned up. Now these surfaces were ground. I sent this table off to a Kinetic up in uh, Milwaukee. They uh, reground the top and the bottom of this. And they purposely, on the bottom side here, where these ways are, where the wear strips are going, they left a fairly rough grind. So we've got really a nice uh, surface here for this um, epoxy to stick to. That was the whole idea. It's flat, but it's just not, they didn't take it to that real super fine grind like they did on the other side of this um, and what they would normally do for ways because they, they knew turkite was going going on these so I've already got these cleaned up I've already got my wear strips uh, cut um, this one is the, the the cast iron does come out a little bit farther here but this is actually beyond the surface that it will ride on over there this side over here has a gib that goes in here and again we'll be going kind of we got a little, I want the gib to actually be able to touch all the way down in the bottom so we'll kind of line it up on this outside here and leave a little gap in there for that gib to be able to expand. Um, so I think we're ready now to get up another batch of the uh, epoxy mixed up and we'll get over here and get this glued down. I'm about ready to drop this down onto the ways here. Now some of you people that are probably thinking or like why is he putting this down onto the main machine ways and not onto the cross slide machine ways. Get this chain that's hanging up here. The reason is it's the length. The cross slide um, 
ways are not the same. They're shorter than the uh, entire length here. And I want to make sure that we are getting good contact from one and the other. And I got to measuring and these ways are more or less kind of the same distance apart as the ones over on the cross slide. So I'm going to bring it over this way just a little bit, drop it back down. So that's just going to give me more contact area here to, for this thing to set on. I've got my cellophane already down on here. So all should be good. We're just going to let this sit and cure uh, at least 24 hours, probably let it go at least 48 hours just to make sure it has plenty of time. And uh, then we can continue on. The next step will be to uh, start scraping the turkite in to the ways and we will scrape this table into the, the saddle rather than the main ways. The main thing I just wanted to have a plenty of surface area for the weight to go on there. I, it would have been sticking out about four inches on either side of these ways if I had put it over here. But this way I get contact from end to end. But we'll start scraping them in. I got some alignment measurements that we'll need to do. Those will be in an upcoming video uh, after we get this stuff time to cure. And uh, hopefully after that, we can put all this stuff back together uh, once we get everything kind of scraped in and tuned up. And uh, yeah, maybe start really actually using this machine uh, after about two years of having it in the shop. So looking forward to that coming up real soon. Well, there we go. We have our turkite is uh, epoxied into place. Uh, Going to be curing and setting up over here under its own weight and on the, the flat ways. It should give a good reference surface to kind of go off on. And like I said, we'll be coming back and scraping this stuff in, doing some alignment measurements, and hopefully have all of our scraping and alignment, at least for the, the, the table and the ways, pretty much out of the way and move on with getting this uh, machine put back together and into usable shape. So uh, with that, guys, uh, that is going to be a wrap, as always. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments, greatly appreciated. Uh, hit that bell icon up there to get a notification when new videos are posted. And a big, huge thank you out there to all the supporters that support the site uh, financially through Patreon, PayPal, etc. Uh, we really couldn't do everything we do here without your help. Uh, your Patreon dollars were used in this project to help purchase the turkite and the epoxy, uh, which was rather expensive. It was about 700 and something bucks uh, just for that stuff to go on this machine. And uh, it really helps having your guys help out there. So you can follow along at home and learn some of the arts and crafts of machine rebuilding and machine shop work, uh, et cetera. So guys, with that, we are going to sign off again. As always, thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.